We're going to do several inoculations. Here we're going to use the culture of Serratia marcescens, which is a gram-negative bacteria. Our stock culture is in a liquid uh, broth in a tube. We are going to inoculate several different things. We're going to inoculate two nutrient auger slants. One we will incubate at room temperature and one at 37 degrees C so we can compare the growth. Uh, we're going to be overall this experiment looking at growth characteristics. So we'll see in this way, is one temperature better suited or more of the optimum temperature where you get better growth than the other. So we'll do 37 and room temperature which is roughly uh, anywhere from 21 to 23 degrees Celsius. We have the nutrient broth that we will grow it in, so we're going to go from a broth to a broth. We haven't uh, done that very often. We're also going to use thioglycolate, which we, uh, this will give us some indication for the oxygen requirements, depending on where it will grow. Will it grow at the top versus throughout the entire medium or only at the bottom? That gives you a clue as to the oxygen requirements. And then we will also inoculate a petri dish with a very complete medium, uh, Trip K soy, which has, it's like nutrient auger, has a, pretty much a little bit of everything in it and everything will grow on it. And we're not necessarily going to look for isolation, but we want good growth in here so we can hopefully get some isolated colonies to look at the appearance of the colonies on there. So as usual, we need to uh, sterilize our loop. And as I said, we are going from a liquid broth culture to a couple of broth cultures and also from the liquid to solid. Always flame the uh, tube. Dip your loop in. With the thioglycolate, you want to obviously flame the tube before you go in. Bring the, the loop in. Just move it up and down a couple times in there. Oftentimes when you're using a broth, you may want to touch the loop on the inside of the tube to make sure that the liquid does all um, be released from that loop and you're not carrying over. So we have a plate here that had been inoculated uh, with serratia marcescens. This was grown at 37 degrees. So we do have good uh, growth there. Colonies are small, relatively small, tend to be round, uh, smooth edges on them. We also grew it on slants. And if you compare this top slant was grown at 37 degrees Celsius. The bottom slant was grown at room temperature, which is about 21 degrees C. You can tell that there's better growth, more heavy growth at the 37. So that would tell you that 37 is closer to its growth temperature optimum. It will grow at room temperature. It's just it will grow better at 37. Once again, we have nice, nice heavy growth on the, the slant at 37. Now we also grow this in a nutrient broth. So once again, we did get nice growth. Oftentimes when you grow bacteria, it tends to kind of settle along the bottom a bit. Uh, so you may have to swirl it a bit. Any cloudiness does indicate growth. Now the other tube that we inoculate was a thioglycolate. This will give us an indication as to the oxygen requirements on here. We just did a stab down and just down and up. You'll notice that there's growth along the stab line, but there's most of the growth is at the top portion of the tube. That is telling you some information about the oxygen requirements. That means it needs oxygen. It prefers to grow Given a choice, it prefers to have a, the atmospheric level concentration of oxygen. If the growth had been solely at the bottom of the tube, that would have told us that it does not like oxygen. It prefers to grow anaerobically. 
some organisms oxygen will actually kill it if there was steady growth throughout the entire tube that would tell us that it's an organism that hey i can grow either way i don't really care but the way the growth pattern is on this it tells us that serratia prefers to have the oxygen therefore it's growing at the higher um, upper portion of the tube